Which camera are we looking at? That one. Right. Well, we can also look at that one. It doesn't matter. And that DJ stands for disc jockey. Hey guys, DJ Ravine here, and I'm here with Ben Bristow, our lead DJ tutor. Right, what, what is it, instructor, <laughs> uh, lecturer? What, 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 what's your role here now? It's head DJ. Head DJ. All right, so where are we today? Uh, we're in Studio 4 at Orsman Road. What's uh, Studio 4? Uh, Studio 4 is the main DJ room here at Point Blank, where we uh, teach all of our DJ classes. Sponsored by Pioneer DJ. Yep, indeed. So we've got a range of different Pioneer kits in here. Surrounded. Amazing kit, it's beautiful. And uh, we're going to learn a little bit about transitioning between different genres of music, specifically tracks that are different BPM. And this is something that people would learn when they come study here? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's one of the questions I often get asked. How do I get between two tracks when they're different speeds? It's quite a common thing that students want to learn. But we cover techniques that help you do that on a lot of our modules here. But today we're going to show you a few different tips and tricks for getting between sort of completely different genres, but it's still making it sound like a, a, you know, a cool transition. Awesome, let's get into it. First up, we've got a drum and bass tune here, and the track that's more like housey. So we've got drum and bass. Nice moves. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad you like it. <laughs> yeah, so this kind of works when you've got a tune where there's like a, a little vocal snippet or something just before the drop of your new track. And obviously you can use that in a number of ways, kind of rhythmically over the track that's playing, even if it's a different tempo. So th this is not going to work so well if you've got a full drum beat on your new track and a bass line and loads of elements. But this one, it's literally got a vocal just before it drops. So that's an isolated vocal, which effectively is a, a sample you can use to re-trigger. So, I mean, I've done it before where I'll be re-triggering that over the top of the track that's playing at the speed of the current track. And if you've got effects on your uh, mixer, it actually sounds really cool if you can chuck like a reverb or something on it. Yeah. Or an echo as well. Mm -hmm. You could even get the echo in time with this track that's playing. So just quickly tap the tempo in. Now I've got an echo in time with this. So it's now on a three over four echo. So you can kind of blend the two sounds together even though they're not the same tempo. Quite well. I mean, another way I might do it is actually scratching with that sample over the track that's playing. So you could be at the end of this and then just start scratching with the, the, the incoming one. And then it's, again, it's kind of already been heard over that main track. All right, so this is a trick that I really like using if I'm going from a slower genre into a faster genre. It generally works better if it's going from a slower genre to a faster genre. The way I'm gonna do it, it kind of pitches up the song that's coming in and it kind of gives it that energy. You know when a song pitches up, it kind of sounds like a riser. Okay, so what we're gonna do is this is the slower track that's gonna be playing and this is the track I'm gonna be mixing in. This track is at 160 normally and this track here, I've got it at 135 right now. So basically how it's gonna work is that I'm gonna play the track here. The track's now at the outro where there's not much going on and I'm ready to bring in my other track. Now I've got them both synced up at the moment so they're both at the same BPM using the sync button and the master sync is on the track that I'm mixing out of. And the track I'm gonna mix in on, when I've dropped in this track, I'm gonna turn the master sync onto this track, and then I'm gonna start bringing up the pitch fader up to the original BPM, which is 160, and I'm gonna do my little mix. So I'll show you guys right now. That's the beauty of it, you know, you can go into anything you want and I, I've just cleared the dance floor, but I don't <laughs> care. Okay, so this next one is where it's kind of using the brake speed of the CDJ. So when you change the brake speed all the way around to the right, it means the deck is going to slow down gradually when you press the pause button. Mm -hmm. 
much in the same way as an old school, or not old school, a turntable works when you turn off the power switch. Obviously the motor loses power and the record still keeps playing. It just doesn't have the same speed anymore. So you hear the pitch go down. Absolute so you, classic yeah. sound. So you get the beat. So this works quite well when you've got a vocal in the outgoing track, especially if you catch it on that you know, bit where the vocal's saying something or singing, because you hear the pitch of the vocal go down. It also tends to work quite well in a breakdown section. So you might be going from a faster tempo track into like a hip hop tune or ghetto funk tune or a slower tempo. You know, if you've got a part where the track that's playing hasn't got that much sort of beats going on, basically, it can sound a bit smoother because you haven't got to worry about the kicks mm -hmm. slowing down. So the trick is really get the brake speed set to slow on the outgoing track, have the new track ready at the start with the fader up and the crossfader in the middle, press pause on this one as it gradually almost comes to a complete standstill to start the next one. So it's as simple as that. You want to try and avoid overlapping them for too long if there's any kind of rhythmical elements in both because you don't want to... You get a bit clashing. Yeah. Whereas some tracks might literally have, you know, strings playing or something and it's not that easy to tell where, what the tempo of it is and therefore you might be able to overlap them a bit longer. Um, so this one's in just a breakdown section. So I would have played it for, you know, a couple of minutes. It's now getting to that point where I want to do the transition. Bang the beat. Bang the so beat. the brake speed's on slow. Bang the beat. And they're completely different tempos, so, you know, it's, a, it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Very classic technique. Yeah. Okay, so this next one is really the principle is using echo as a way of creating a bit of a segue between the two tracks. You can also use reverb. Yeah, reverb as well. I mean, echo, you can do it where you just apply echo to the outgoing track, cut it completely, so you get a nice echoing out sound mm -hmm. of the previous tune, and then starting the new one. But the key is having the BPM on your effects unit to the BPM of the one that you're bringing in. Yeah, well, it can work the other way as well. It can work with the tempo of the, the previous track. But this way, it's almost like a beat match because the echo of the outgoing track is at the tempo of the incoming track. Mm -hmm. So it, in a way, you can then trigger the incoming track and the beats line up with the echoing out sound. So it kind of sounds like a mix almost. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so I've got the intro of this track lined up and before I did the transition in the headphones I would get the tempo of that track into the mixer so the echo speed is going to be working at the speed of the the incoming track uh, and I'd apply that echo to this outgoing one so this would be faded down this one's playing So the echo there was in time with that incoming beat, as you heard, so it worked quite well. So this is a cool transition. It's basically time stretching the track. So you've got to have your master tempo one, and also you have to have your pitch fader on wide pitch. And then you slowly slow it down, and it creates this digital stretching effect. And then from there on, you can kind of just fade that track out and then play a new track and bring it in. But you can also do some really cool tricks, like effects, cues, and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, let's show everyone what, uh, what this is all about. Yeah, cool. Now obviously you can't always do that if you haven't got two people because I was there filtering the incoming track in. But what can work well is when you get it down to that really slow kind of minus 99.5 sort of area, you've got a horribly sort of stretched sound, which then is quite ripe for, uh, ripe for filtering. So when you're slowing it right down, be careful not to hit minus 100. Because, because it will literally just stop. Exactly, and that nobody wants that on a dance floor. But yeah. when you get to 99.5, you get that, and you can kind of... You can sometimes kind of rhythmically manipulate it in time with the incoming track, which then kind of makes it blend together a bit better. 
All right, so one other technique that you can use is if you want to go from a very slow song into a very quick song, sometimes it's easier to just double up the speed of the slow song and finding a tune that's that speed. So here I've got a track that's 86 BPM. I'm going to mix in a track here that's 172 BPM, which is double 86. So that means you can use a song that's half time and mix into a song that is double time because technically they're running on pretty much the same same beat, but they're just one's just half the speed. In this case, we're going to mix a drum and bass tune into a hip hop tune. So this hip hop tune is a slower tune at 86, drum and bass at 172. Yeah, this one, as Stanley said, is 86 BPM. It's probably in eight bar sections, whereas the drum and bass tune is more likely to be in 16 bar sections. So you'd still want to make sure the phrases are matching up and then basically drop it in. And you can hear, for every two bars of, of the drum bass tune, there's one bar of the hip hop tune. So then it's a question of beat matching between them. Scratching, mixing, and stunting. All right, everyone, hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you learned a little something about transitioning between different genres and different BPMs. And that's just one of the many things that you'll learn here at Point Black Music School with Mr. Bristow here, our head DJ. Yeah, we teach obviously a range of different courses. So the complete DJ course, which covers a lot of different skills like we've been looking at today. And also now we've got three modules which are part of the degree program. So essential DJ skills, creative DJ skills and advanced DJ skills, which are all 10 week courses in their own right. Uh, and you'll learn a lot of different techniques on those, as well as our weekend courses. Yep, uh, online tractor course as well. Uh, yep, yep. So make sure you guys check out pointblankmusicschool.com if you want to find out more about that. And we'll see you guys next time. For a hip DJ, one of the first decisions is picking what music to start with.